You know, troubleshooting and repairing the hydraulic brake system on your vehicle is really quite simple once you understand the basic principles behind the system. Hi, I'm Scott Cusey, and I'll be your narrator and host as we take a look at troubleshooting and repairing the hydraulic brake system on your vehicle. Now, actually, the basic principle behind the system is that once you try to put pressure on a liquid, such as brake fluid, it doesn't compress. So once you put that pressure in the system, you move fluid through the system, a mechanical action happens on the other end, like the brake shoes move out or brake pads move against the rotors to stop your vehicle. Now, if there happens to be some air in that system, you're going to have trouble because air or gas will compress. You'll end up with a spongy brake pedal and probably not very good braking action when you're trying to stop your vehicle also. So we're going to help you eliminate that during this tape. Now everybody's going to need a basic set of hand tools like some wrenches, hammer, punch, chisels, some of the other items, socket sets that you would normally have in your toolbox for doing your own repairs. But during this chapter, we're going to detail some of the specific specialty tools that you'll be using throughout this tape to perform the repairs that we demonstrate. During chapter two, we'll take a look at really replacing the heart of your hydraulic brake system, and that is the master cylinder. During chapter three, we'll demonstrate how to remove the air from the system when we talk about how to bleed your brakes. During chapter four, we're going to demonstrate a typical disc brake caliper replacement on a front disc brake system. During chapter five, we'll take a look at replacing a wheel cylinder in a drum brake system. And during chapter six, we'll take a look at replacing the flexible and steel brake lines on your vehicle. But for now, I'd like to spend just a few moments talking about some of the specialty items that we're going to be using during some of the repair procedures on this tape. Now, of course, you're going to need a, a lug wrench, a jack, and some jack stands for doing work on your brake system. But some of the specialty items that you're going to be using will include, first off, a set of hex sockets like this right here. And they're commonly used for removing disc brake caliper mounting bolts. Now, if you've got a late model vehicle, you might end up having to use a socket like this. That's called a Torx bit socket. It's got kind of a six-pointed star head on it. So you'll have to really kind of almost get into the job to determine what type of socket that you'll need to remove those caliper mounting bolts. Now, if you're working on brake lines, you're going to want to be using what I call a flare nut wrench. And it's got an opening on it here that you can slide over the brake line. And it's got a six-point design on the inside to help you prevent rounding off the head on the brake line itself. So these wrenches are really pretty necessary if you're going to do any brake line work. Now, when it comes to bleeding procedures, a bleeder wrench with a couple different sizes, like this one here, is a real handy item. Or even a ratcheting style bleeding wrench like this makes it real nice to get in on some of those tight spots that you might have to get in at to actually do your bleeding procedures. Now, bleeding procedures can be done two ways, a two-person method or a one-man method. And a one-man method simply requires you to buy a one-man brake bleeding kit like this one here. They're really not that expensive and can make the job go a lot quicker and easier. Now, I always like to have a pair of safety glasses around to use whenever I'm doing repairs on a vehicle. And also, if you're doing disc brake repairs, you want to make sure that you have some synthetic disc brake caliper lubricant to put on the sliding surfaces. That'll make sure that your calipers work right for many years to come. You need some wheel bearing grease if you have to remove wheel bearings when doing the brake job. And a couple items right here. A propane torch and some liquid spray penetrating oil can really help loosen some of those tough to get bolts or even tough to get out bleeder screws. Now, of course, you're going to need some brake fluid to add or top off the system and some brake cleaner to clean parts as you're doing the job, some shop towels, and, and also some hand cleaner to clean yourself up after you've got your work done. Now, one of the items I like to make sure that I have for a vehicle is a shop manual. And a shop manual like this is designed specifically for the style of vehicle that you're working on and can really detail the specific procedures on your exact vehicle. 
And once again, an, another item that can really help the job go a lot quicker and easier. Right now, I'd like to congratulate you for choosing Car Care Seminar to help you become a more successful do-it-yourselfer. And before you start your next project, check to see if there's a Car Care Seminar tape available to help you do the job the right way, the first time, and every time. Now, let's get started with our first repair. The tools recommended to replace your master cylinder are a socket or wrench set, a pliers and large screwdriver, a set of flare nut wrenches, a protective fender cover, and a pair of safety glasses. The only additional items you'll need are a replacement master cylinder, approximately a quart of the recommended brake fluid for your vehicle, and some spray penetrating oil. First compare the replacement master cylinder to the old one of the car make sure that you have the correct replacement. Place some old newspapers or shop towels underneath the master cylinder inside the engine compartment to catch the brake fluid drips during removal. Place a fender cover on the front fender to protect the vehicle's finish from brake fluid. Now disconnect the brake lines from the master cylinder. A light squirt of spray penetrating oil may help loosen fittings that are corroded or rusty. To prevent stripping of the brake line fittings themselves, we suggest using flare nut wrenches whenever working on brake lines. Once the lines are removed from the master cylinder, plug or tape the ends of them to prevent contamination. If the actuator rod of the replacement master cylinder is permanently attached to the master cylinder, this rod must be disconnected from the brake pedal before going on. Next, remove the mounting bolts or nuts from the firewall or power brake booster. Pull the master cylinder forward and lift upward away from the mounting bolts to remove it. Be careful not to spill any of the brake fluid onto the vehicle's finish as the brake fluid can cause permanent damage to the paint. You're now ready to prepare the replacement master cylinder before installation. If the master cylinder is mounted at an angle on the vehicle, you must bench bleed the master cylinder before installation. If the master cylinder is mounted level on the vehicle, Bleeding may be performed with the master cylinder in place on the vehicle. In either case, we suggest bench bleeding the master cylinder before installation. For bench bleeding, the ends of the specially designed valves must be trimmed to eliminate the back pressure that is generated during the piston return stroke cycle. Install the adapters into the brake line outlets hand tight. Clamp the master cylinder horizontally in a bench vise. Tighten the vise securely to prevent the master cylinder from moving during the bleeding procedures. Fill the reservoir with new, clean brake fluid. Never reuse old brake fluid. Most vehicles require DOT 3 brake fluid, but we recommend you consult your owner's manual for the correct brake fluid recommendation for your particular vehicle.